Okay, hi guys. Uh, welcome back to the next part, okay, part 7 okay, of our atmospheric circulation series. Okay, today we're going to be talking about orographic rainfall. Okay, this is actually a continuation from the previous part, okay, part 6, which is basically on your convectional rainfall. Okay, so make sure you go and look at that video first, okay, go and understand, okay, what convectional rainfall is first. Before we move on to this, okay, because orographic rainfall can tend to be slightly more complicated, okay, it's actually also very simple, okay, but some people tend to find it a bit more complicated. Okay, we're going to just uh, jump right in. Okay, what is orographic rainfall? Okay, firstly, you need to understand, okay, orographic rainfall is essentially a form of rainfall which is formed by moist air which has been physically forced. Okay, this is the key characteristic of orographic rainfall. This is what causes orographic rainfall to stand out from convectional rainfall. Okay, so whereby it's actually physically forced along where? Okay, areas such as Topo uh, such as mountains, okay, BC topographic barriers, okay, mountains over here. Okay, so what actually happens is that orographic rainfall, you just think about it, it's basically like rainfall that is caused by a mountain. Very simple. Okay, it is not usually a result of intense convection activity. So take note, it is different. Okay, orographic rainfall does not require extreme amounts of heat to actually form. Okay, it can form just because a mountain is in the way and it gets forces up the slope. Okay? Okay, so we'll look into the formation of orographic rainfall. Okay, firstly, you need to take note, okay, that like we already had mentioned, okay, we started with a characteristic, right? The presence of a mountain is what actually tends to kickstart the entire thing. Okay, at trade wind latitudes. Okay, why do I say trade wind latitudes? Okay, because trade wind latitudes is where the wind will strike the mountain, it is where water vapor is being carried. Okay, so when moist air actually blows against a mountain range, okay, take note moist air. Okay, the air is forced to rise. Okay, it is forced to rise on the windward side. Okay, take note of windward side. Okay, of the mountain where there is higher elevation and lower pressure. Okay, essentially, you look at the mountain. The mountain is something like this. Okay, your air will basically be forced to fly upwards this way. So it will go up this way. Okay, so this is actually your windward side over here. Okay, so what actually happens is that the air parcel. Okay, you pretend that there is an air parcel over here. Okay, it will actually be forced to rise as it is going uphill, right? So as the air parcel expands, it will rise, okay, and hence the temperature of your air parcel actually will fall. Okay, so the temperature of air parcel falls, what actually happens next? Okay, the clouds which contains the water vapor, okay, all these clouds, right, they contain water vapor because of the trade winds, right, which actually bring the moisture, okay, let's say especially if it's by the ocean, okay, the clouds which contain water vapor will actually start to form. So you see that there will be little little clouds which will start to form along the uh, windward side of the slope. And this would actually be what brings the rain. Okay, so this is what brings the rain. So these are not cumulonimbus clouds, it's different. Okay, take note of that. So what actually happens is that results in the heaviest amount of rainfall on the windward side, which is this side over here. Okay, the windward side is because this is where your trade winds are blowing. This is your trade winds. Okay. And as a result, there is little or no rainfall on the leeward side. So once it gets to the other side, okay, once it gets to this side over here, there's actually no more rainfall. Okay, so let's look at the example um, of one. Okay, so this is an example of your orographic rainfall. Okay, like I had mentioned before. Okay, your windward side okay, is on this side over here. This is where your moist air will actually rise. So your moist air will rise okay, and then it will be forced upwards with all the rain over here. Okay, you can see all the rain falling on the windward side. And then after that, your leeward side okay, will actually be, be left to dry. Okay, there will actually be dry air instead. Which is why you see there's actually little vegetation over here. There's, ba there's barely any vegetation okay, because there's actually no moisture on the leeward side of the slope. Okay. So then moving on to your exam requirements, okay, similarly, okay, like your convectional rainfall, you very simply just need to understand, okay, what exactly the process and the formation of orographic rainfall is, like I had just gone through before. Okay, understand the areas. Okay, the areas in this case we're talking at, we're looking at mountains, okay, topographic barriers, okay, topographic um, hills. Okay, and then it also tends to be a good form of analysis, especially when you link it to cast landscape. Okay, so we will see why. Okay, you've got things like your limestone um, pavement, things like your um, your cone cast. Okay, this could also be a topographic barriers. Okay, which actually causes orographic rainfall to form. 
Okay, so if not, actually that's all for orographic info and convectional info. Okay, it's actually very, very simple to understand. Okay, one more part of this whole rainfall section would be your, um, the, 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 the formation in terms of your nucleus and all. So your hydro, I think it's hydro, uh, something, I forgot, S something. Uh. Okay, if you want to, you can go and take a look at that part in your textbook and all. If not, convectional rainfall, orographic info is really all you need to know for the exam, okay? Um, moving on to the next part, okay, we'll most likely be covering either rocks or maybe casts. Okay, moving on to one of those. Okay, before we move on to drainage basin hydrology. Okay, so stay tuned for the next few videos. Okay, and be sure to subscribe if you have not already. Okay, if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.